Hello, I'm Aos, and welcome back to Pacific Drive. Our car looks horrible. <laughs> I have stripped it of all the parts. I've put a lot of miles on them. So we need to refit our entire car. Uh, by a lot of miles, I mean I have explored the zone. All of it. There's, there's just the mission left. And I mean, I have done everything I could. I have gotten as much Olympian fragments as I can, and we're all set. I put an additional, well, let's round it down to 20 hours uh, between this episode and the last. So, we need a new engine to start off with. I put a lot of effort into getting uh, the enough Olympian fragments to make limb chips, and then this on top of it. We're going to upgrade to the limb chip engine. I've been running with the electric, uh, the amp engine, for... A long time. I miss the gas. I, I miss having that as a thing. Uh, mind you, it was a lot easier just putting like uh, generators on the side and like this is just pure energy for us. Uh, but we're gonna go back to the gas, which means we can get our fuel synthesizer out. Where is it? There it is. And actually, I did not check this out. Oh, it's brand new. <laughs> okay, 0, 0.0 miles. Yeah, okay, that's why I kept it. So, uh, if you didn't see where that was, by the way, I'm sorry. Down here in the lower right-hand corner has the number of miles that you've traveled with this, uh, this device. Around, I've discovered, roughly, around 70 to 100 miles, things start breaking to the point of being unrepairable so you do have to rep replace everything around that point in time as I said everything is now being replaced it was there and then some so here we go uh, fuel synthesizer uh, actually back one thank you ooh I don't think I have enough Olympium uh, things for all of this so what we're gonna do instead is gonna upgrade ourselves Radiation suit. This one takes a huge amount, half of what we have left, but it's going to block the radiation under 2.5. That is a tremendous amount of radiation being blocked. I wish i gotten this a long time ago, but yeah. <laughs> and then Olympium shirt. Why not? Explosion resistance. We are fully kitted. This is, we've got everything now. We are as protected as we can be. And... Leak resistant battery. <laughs> Unlock not everything, but really quite a lot of things. <laughs> yes, uh, there is, I believe, two more things left to unlock, which would be the deco vend and the fish tank. I need more limb chips, which I don't have enough Olympian fragments for, and then who knows about the, the fish tank. Probably a lot of people. It's the internet. I'm sure that everyone everywhere knows. <laughs> But otherwise, we've unlocked absolutely everything. Almost. What is this? Oh, a remnant ghost. If you lose, if you don't escape part of the zone, you leave behind a remnant ghost. Has not happened to me yet. I've, I've, I've escaped by the skin of my teeth. But, uh, yeah. I need to do that purposely one time so I can scan a remnant ghost to get this unlocked. Cool. So three things left. Great. And yes, that is our energy. I spent ten just because the car had a lot of quirks. But otherwise, this just keeps going up. Next, we need tires. Four tires. Five tires. Five tires. You always bring a spare. Raining tires, I love it. Why are you not fitting? Oh, I have an extra door? Oh, was that an idiot? I was an idiot. Yay, idiot. You know what, that's fine. Having an extra door is just great. That's what these are for. Speaking of, oh, I had an extra door. Sure. Uh, we're going to take this. Please, thank you. Resource radar, brand new one. It goes on top. 
because Olympian fragments are impossible to find. I will keep saying it because it's true. This solves all that. Mostly. Bumpers. Bumpers. We do specialty bumpers. We are going to use a limb shield, absolutely. Which I believe is under this, unfortunately. Yes. Limb shield, and then I like... Well, we can do a lot of different things here. Uh, we do have like the nitro boost, ooh. Or a uh, magneto bumper, right? That would cost me inventory. It would pick up a bunch of things randomly. Like when I explode all the tourists. I've taken an offensive approach to them. So, I think we're going to stick with the thing I'm not seeing. Limb pulse emitter. There we go. Sure. Uh, I believe this is the shield. Yes. Pulse emitter can be on the back. I know the inventory's full. I was trying to pick it up. Cool. Now we need headlights. Whoops. Bio headlights. I think these are the ones with the brightest. 450? It's also reinforced. Physical resist. Ooh. Ooh. Brighter? Or physical resistance? We're going to go with bright. And yes, I see that it had four on the listing there. I think the other two are in the uh, repair over here. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Brand new stuff. What do we need next? We need storage. Extra large roof storage. This thing covers more storage than the trunk does. So, yeah, great. Just make sure the pickpockets don't take it, because then you lose everything. <laughs> it's been 20 hours. Things have happened. <laughs> so the only thing I don't like about this, this potential run is getting to C3. I mean, we can go up and over and then go up this way. This would be a perfect route for it. But I don't like the way this is. So what we're going to do is we're going to change it. We're going to re-roll. Uh, you definitely get that early. You need to get sap. So this part of the mid zone. And then uh, you can get... I think it was this one. Or this. You know what? I have no idea. We'll go look at it. It is the Junction Restabilizer. And so we would need Thermosap Crystals, Plasma, and Unstable Energy. And it allows you to <laughs> basically re-roll the randoms of the, uh, the zone. Whether or not it's an unstable zone or stable seems to flip back and forth but also it can be completely random in general and not flip. Um, if you don't like how many resources are available, then I can't even go highlight it, then uh, you can re-roll for a better resource. Uh, this will work out well for, uh, for us, I think, though. Corrosive downpours. Never mind. Never mind. I, I said that before I looked at what that is. We're doing this again. Perpetual stability. We ain't changing that, no matter what it is. <laughs> That's very rare. So yeah, okay, great. We got the perfect run ready for us. Double check there's no quirks. Okay. Normally the, the quirk goes yellow if there's a quirk, but yeah, no, it's good. We are all set. Paint and decals. Like I said, I, I worked on it a little bit. Fuel. This. Did I ever say what this does? It is what it is. A fuel synth synthesizer. It eats up our battery power, but uh, otherwise it's a constant source of fuel. You can pop the fuel can out, take it from here, put it in the tank, and so on and so forth, and just keep on going. Make sure you got a few battery recharges, but otherwise it's good. Oh, yes. I stripped everything, so I gotta fix this. Off we go. Yes. Gonna be weird having to worry about gas again. There's a lot of gas though. Look at that. We're good.
we are off to shortcuts. Yeah, that's fine. We'll go to go here then. E6, heavy fog. Cool. But you go to the end of it and you click there and you, you, you bypass that way. I I don't know what happened. I don't know why C3 is even an option then. If you can't get to it. Developers, I think you overlooked something. <laughs> cool. Hey, another receiver. Well, I was going to listen to these things anyway, so yeah, great. Let's also get the anchor while we're here. But, we are going to continue on with this story. So, we may have listened to this one before, but we're going to pick up where we're kind of where we left off. How do you force 100,000 people out of their homes without facing major resistance? Money. Even if you're the United States government, facing down what's being peddled as the greatest threat our nation has ever faced, the answer is, you don't. Peddled? So they were advertising This is Frequency it? File, Episode 3, The Human Cost. Oop, hello. How did I get turned around? Last episode, I reported all the cold, hard facts I could get my hands on. If you missed that episode, here's the summary. There wasn't much. Are you done? Now, we jump tracks to the stories of the people to knit together old records and eyewitness accounts to form some fabric of the true story. Whoever's cool. job it was at Arda to suppress stories did a really good job. What they did to keep that sheer number of people from talking and then to smear uh, the stories that did come out it? was a masterstroke of obfuscation. Oh, down there. Unfortunately okay. for Arda, the cases that made it all the way to court became public record. And the facts were these. Arda played nice at first with a generous relocation package. They offered cold, hard cash and built sprawling housing complexes in nearly every state to resettle the former residents. These new communities were built as idyllic, white picket fenced neighborhoods where you were sure to be surrounded by all American families who shared your same values while enjoying the benefits of government subsidized grocery stores, school districts, and manicured public parks. Not a bad deal for the looks of things. When it Sounds came to terrible. The, routes, the people who wouldn't leave for any amount, things got ugly. But in the end, the government won out, as it always does. <laughs> and while the government has this the not going right well. to seize private property, the Fifth Amendment mandates just compensation be paid for it. But it doesn't specify when or how this compensation be made. And many dissenters ended up with nothing through good old loopholes and bureaucracy. Some of whom are still pursuing their claims to this day. Fine. But the chilling thing is, those left with empty pockets consider themselves lucky. There is a saying they mutter amongst themselves under their breath. That at sure. least they had the luck to Ugh. not live in Sierra. You need to sit and stay. I need to patch you up a little bit for my reckless behavior. I was enjoying the tunes, essentially. Wasn't paying enough attention. Uh, next one. Of the witnesses to the CRM disaster that are still alive, most aren't willing to speak to me. But one eyewitness Actually, account remains the, the most damning report of what happened. Meet Lou Arganza. She was nine when she last saw her parents alive. You were born in the zone. Yes. Born and raised in Sierra Town until, well, until it wasn't a town anymore. Lou was evacuated from the zone on February 13th, 1973. Can you share what you remember from that day? I was in a week-long wilderness camp. This year, they think my elementary school would put on. they throw the kids into the woods, show us how to pick apart animal droppings, skip the birds, you know, things like that. It was my favorite thing as a kid. But that year, I really didn't want to go. Well, something called the Limb Fair was coming to Sierra, and I begged my dad to let me stay. Bright light. Bright he told me light. I could see it the following year. Well, that... That obviously didn't happen. Obviously? What, what do you mean, obviously? Uh, next one. Sorry. I wish there's a way to play these in, in sequence, but aside from doing the it manually... Fair. 
Arda advertised it as a good old fashioned small town get together. And we're just on our way out. World Fair of sorts for the hardworking government employees and cool. their families that lived in Sierra Town. The flyers and brochures I've gotten my hands on promised all manner of things mundane and fantastical. Kiss your low tech washing machine goodbye. Take home this limb nebulizer and zap your clothes and diapers clean. Can we have one of these fairs? I like this idea. When limb tech can transform your grass into something more. This push to get limb tech into the homes of zone residents, housewives in particular, was a deliberate and strategic what? move. Am I stuck? The cynical reason, and the most popular interpretation, Where is, the road? is that it was a PR uh -huh. push to rehabilitate limb tech's image. By 1973, there'd been enough reports of radioactive fallout really? and again disappearances that suspicion of what Arda was doing was high. Where were you when the CRM incident okay. happened? I think that's that. That's the road. Base camp about 20 miles out of town. Sirens went off during dinner. We barely I think we had charge time that to now. whether it was a drill or real before the shockwave broke through. Ooh. Luckily, we'd been through the disaster procedure days before. We dove under our tables to take cover. We were just kids, and at first thrilled for the drama unfolding in real time. It was hours before Arthur came to extract us. By that time, we'd scrambled up onto a hill to signal for help and saw the... Stay. The... Cappy. Take your time. Please don't. I'm on a hurry here. I'm on a schedule. 20 years and I still can't go anywhere near a county fair of any sort. But you weren't at the fair. later when most of us were deposited in an orphanage that well, we learned that our parents died. Oh, I should probably get some of the plasma. Yeah, I'm going to get some plasma. I need to uh, craft a battery, I think. Battery charger. Because I've been teleporting a little too much. Oops. At least I'm having time to, to put these out. There you go. and holds up to the best of my verification efforts. She's told that story many times and hasn't changed this story in the ensuing years. Chalk it up to good memory or deeply seated trauma, but it is, as far as I can tell, real. The stories from others, however, inspire a healthy dose of skepticism. Those who weren't too scared of government retaliation were few. And the ones who shared their stories loved their 15 minutes of fame a little too much. Any talk show or gossip rag or cheap date willing to cool. listen heard from these types and made piecing together the zone's cheap true date, history huh? for someone like me decades later a migraine inducing oh, experience. Mine. Because these stories, as every good gossip knows, morphed over time. What started as the most powerful lightning storms recorded on Earth turned into UFOs touching down. An innocent spiderweb became something to be avoided on pain of death. A grassy lawn left untended became a feeding ground for something called burp bunnies. The tales Those are real. became taller as the years went by. Those suck. And the more I heard, the more my suspension of disbelief left me. And while the Sierra disaster was only one of the many incidents that occurred over the zone's 32-year history, it is the one I return to as a prime example. Whatever happened there in Sierra is the type of disaster that caused the creation of the exclusion zone in the first place. We can extrapolate from what little we know of what happened here. If this is the one story to get out, how many more horrors did wind technology cause? A lot. Trust me, I've seen almost all of them. The worst is them, something we're going to see today. I'm not spoiling it. It's something to look forward to. Me dodging back and forth in the car trying not to be crushed. Yeah, that. It was on the screen temporarily. You have no idea what it was. You haven't seen this yet. <laughs> there we go. C3. We're taking a bit of a longer route than I would have liked. I'm disappointed. But we are not passing by perpetual stability. 
It's way too rare. And also gas station and repair shop? Yeah. We're definitely going through here. Nice. Mid zone. <laughs> well, there's a way out. Let's see about getting this extra on before we head all the way through. Because perpetual stability. Best get all the anchors. Um, where is the next one? Here it is. Is it five? Yes. Finally, back to the question of Ophelia Turner. The fact is, most of the people I spoke to didn't know her. How is it that the supposed inventor of limb technology herself, who ostensibly led the Arda R&D project, wasn't known across the board? It's almost as if the American public knew her more than the people who worked and lived in the zone, thanks to the PR machine. But how does that all balance out? The best I could get were vague acknowledgments, mainly from scientists. Mind you, this lot was also the most tight-lipped. But those who showed a yeah. hint of recollection spoke of her as if she were an urban legend herself. I mean, I heard her name from time to time. Never saw her once, though. Uh, I don't remember an Ophelia. Oh, but there was an Alan Turner who was heavily involved in limb R&D. Not a lot of women in the labs. I would have noticed one for sure. Curiouser and curiouser. Yes, very much so. I've yet to piece that together. Is that a gas station? Already? Sure. I mean, it's also a pothole, so that kind of sucks, but that's fine. Uh, next one. That was number five. Yes. Researching Ophelia Turner's yeah. story feels like poking around the edges of a void. When I look directly at my subject, nothing appears to be there. But as I tease around the edges, a shape begins to emerge in the null space. It is with great journalistic integrity that I began to define integrity. those edges. But even then, it's tempting to fill in the spaces with Ooh, good old-fashioned imagination. But hey, I knew what I was signing up for when I decided to unearth a decades-old mystery. Oh, steering wheel. These are rare. This is episode four of Frequency File. In lieu of no one having a personal account of Ophelia Turner, we turn to more facts in the periphery. In this episode, I dig into ARDA, the government agency behind the research and development of limb technology, as well as the scant facts of limb technology itself. Bear with me as we depart the shores of known, connected facts and slingshot from one theory to another. By Sounds now, like fun. you're probably starting to gather what the problem was with the very concept of limb technology. You're insane. The rumors about limb were healthy and far-reaching. That it could solve world hunger and overpopulation. That it had alchemical powers to convert matter from one form to another. Or would finally plug the technological gap needed to realize the long-dreamed-of perpetual energy machines. Even for the scientifically oh. disinclined like myself, We're hurting it's a little easy bit. to oh. conclude that Radiation no one everywhere. technology could fulfill okay. all of mankind's wildest fantasies. And yet, here was Lynn Technology. Promising all those things in one swoop. And remember, any and all actual scientific detail about limb technology is kept absolutely airtight. Every schematic, lab note, and mathematical proof that was allegedly smuggled out of the zone or recreated from memory was dissected by experts around the world. All were found to be well outside the realm of reality. And those scattered claims of rogue Oops. limb technology out in the world? They were all red herrings. Nothing proven. We're gonna wait right here. I could fix up the car because I forgot to put the shield on as soon as I got in the zone. Again. Right, next one. So, what do all those rumors about limb technology leave us with? The most popular theory by far was that limb technology never existed. Oh, it exists. We just don't know what it means. Opportunists to siphon government funds into their pockets. The 
demonstration from Dr. Ophelia Turner and President Koch was well within the ability of an amateur magician. And once again, Dr. Turner's lack of accomplishments in her academic career made an easy portrait of a scientist eager for a win. That would slot Dr. Turner firmly in the myth camp. We may never be there able to agree now? on what Lim was, or if it even existed. But we can certainly understand why its existence was necessary. The state of the world that existed needed to believe in something so fantastical. Here's my submission to the ever-growing theory pile. It is no coincidence that the year the zone was established was 1955. That year also marked the start of the space race. For that next decade, there is no hotter topic, no singular focus of effort and funding than beating the Soviets. With Sputnik's launch in 1957, followed by Gagarin's first brush with space in 1961, America fell behind with every passing year. Its desperation only increased with the very public explosion of Project Vanguard, America's first satellite launch attempt. And then, to go from not being able to get off the launch pad to six years later being the first to land a man on the moon? Sure. That is a whole lot of technological progress to make from a losing position. The timing of Lim technology couldn't have been more perfect. The government springs into action, promoting Lim while being simultaneously Aww. effusive and evasive, an American political specialty. The live demonstrations are few, the vagaries plenty, but there is a notable wave of professors vacating their spots at major universities to take on positions at ARDA. Some interesting fields of study for the bunch. Experts in crop domestication, enclosed biological ecosystems, crop domestication. and biology. What sounds like a child's tale begins to take on a shape that fits cleanly with the race to the stars. I will reiterate here, this is only my theory. Yeah. But I dare say it's a good one. <laughs> no. That's what makes theories great. They don't have to be good. They don't have to be bad. They just have to be theories. There's a repair stop right here. Why Why did I waste all those materials? If I just looked on the map instead of listening to the stupid thing, I could have been right here. <sighs> Alright, fine. It's fine. Anyway, next one. Last of part three. The problem we've come to understand is that something went so horribly wrong inside the zone's borders and caused all of it, limb, disasters, and the rest, to be hermetically sealed off forever. As dubious as the fuzzy photos and inconsistent stories were. Hey, I got a pretty clear shot of Bigfoot, thing. thank you very much. What was going on in the zone wasn't normal. For as tall as Arda built those walls, they couldn't After hide oddly colorful 60 hours, this is very normal. Or ice storms in the summer. Or localized hurricane force winds compacted into tight columns. There were two words that popped up time and time again within these eyewitness stories. Okay, Instability that. and anomalies. Yep. I've been able They're to everywhere. distill a few things about them. That they were two of the many, many unfortunate byproducts of the R&D going on in the zone. The government was forced to admit to elevated levels of radiation. Pretty hard to cover that one up, as it became a tourist attraction to hike along the walls with a Geiger counter. But this instability seemed to be some combination of ecological and physical fallout. Some described it as a state of constant landslides. Others recounted storms unlike anything seen on planet Earth. As far as what the anomalies were, I couldn't tell you. Neither can I. Face first into two Just stay away from the pickpockets, though, question. and everything's fine. Either people refused to say a single word about them, or people had too many conflicting explanations to find a single thread of commonality. Perhaps that's a topic for a series on its own. Roblox at every turn with this story. Okay. Roadblocks, huh? Not quite. I hate when the menu doesn't close. This is Frequency File, Episode 5. By this point in my investigation, the unanswered questions kept piling up. Oh, no, thank you. The depths I was having to go to, the mysteries upon mysteries, was making me dizzy. Many times, my well, hopes were Well, that's fun. Was I getting anywhere with this? 
No. But you're fun to listen to. You know what? That's great. It's wonderful. We're getting the heck out of here. So, as thanks, this episode is all about you. Your theories, your hopes and dreams, your love and hate, your opinions. I've sifted through the hundreds of letters and calls, and here's a selection of the sentiment you've shared. Cool. Is that it? Do we have to do I have to restart this? I hope I don't have to restart the one. Uh, we are not staying in that storm. That storm drains everything. It goes absolutely terrible for everyone. It it, it just I came out of nowhere as far as I know. Alright, stabilizer. Uh, where are we? So we can go head up. In virulent acid, which is Acid does just direct damage. It goes past the car defenses. And then, of course, acid devours fuel. And yeah, wonderful. Um, we're still good, most things. Yeah. Next up. I think this is the one, right? Yes. Oh, I remember this. The crazy callers. I listened to every one of your episodes and I did my own research. And I have to say, <laughs> there is no chance in hell that Ophelia Turner invented them technology. She was 100% a convenient excuse. I mean, for starters, she's a woman. As an American, who would you rather rally around? Some dweeb scientist squinting at a test tube? Or a woman in a lab coat posing for pretty pictures? I think it says more about you than anything else there. When will we learn? When will you learn? Uh, you're wrong about one thing. Huh? Some limb technology did make it out into the larger world. <laughs> you remember the personal cassette players that were all the rage in 1979? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing we all begged our parents for Christmas? No. How do you know what Lim is then? Never mind. What I don't understand is how they could let all those zone people back out into the world. Like, what are you doing out of your cage? Were experimented on and got exposed to Lord knows what. And they Ooh. just rolled out the red carpet for them and let them loose. Oh, that's just completely irresponsible. Like letting you out of your cage. Yes. But they move in, and suddenly we get freak ice storms and armies of six legged possums overrunning the neighborhood. I can't sleep a single night without hearing their, their grubby little hands, or ugh, so many little hands, going through my trash bins. My husband tried to fight them off and got bitten. And he ain't been right since. I tell you, go there, and it's already too late. Okay. I got some issues with her. I got some serious issues for her. With her, for her, whatever. I, she's, she's wrong. She's just wrong. My frame rate's also wrong. Uh, oh, I remember what I was going to say. Sorry. I had like three different things thinking about there for a second. Um... It has snowed in Florida. It does snow in Florida. It's rare, but it does happen. 
And so, saying all of a sudden that you have an ice storm or something, guess what? Things happen. And if you, you think otherwise, then I'm sorry. The universe is bigger than you are. Oh, she irritates me. I She really irritates me. I, moving on. I'm, I'm shutting up and moving on. along for the ride with me gives me the determination to continue on no matter how deep this rabbit hole goes so thank you and i'll see you next episode oh but i want to know i want to know you get one of them that is actually decent one of them i love how they did that by the way it was wonderful and i want to know what he saw in space i want to know what was the big deal about arda in space because there's a lot of strange stuff coming from space to concerning Arda. There is the payloads, which uh, I don't think I've ever read that. Don't ask me what, what happened there. Uh, payloads, what would they be under? Anomalies? Resources, resources probably. Yes, Olympian Vein, we'll get there. Payload. When the sky turns against the zone and its residence, as it so often does, sometimes it, it comes bearing gifts. They can appear anywhere, and I would like to say that they're better elsewhere, but they're not. It's just random items that you get in it. I was hoping they would have more of a, uh, a lore thing to it. It doesn't. It is just a resource. Shame. Next one. Just one moment. There we go. I'm a collector. I'm sorry. It, it's it's a condition at this point. Yeah. We're on to chapter six. We're almost done. If this is more of them, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't think there was that many. Hello. Cool. This is a message for... <laughs> I love that. This is Frequency File, Episode 6. Cool. 
We're good. We're good. Listeners, I am ashamed to admit the difficulty I had at this point in my investigation. Why? Shoot. Shamelessly mired in rumors and dead ends, and pretty darn stressed about what to do next. So this phone call offers me a lead on a cold, stormy night, and in all my posturing... It was probably a clear, wonderful night, and they're just doing that. Evidence, I am amused to say that this is the sketchiest source I've come across in my career. And cool. yet, it led me somewhere. Stay right here. Is that it? Just a second. So, an anchor. There we go. This is the anchor radar. Uh, if you can't find a anchor that's nearby, it's got a, it does have a range, a very short range, um, then you hit this up, and yeah it does a little echolocation thing so you can find it it does take a little bit of battery power for it uh, but that's alright we can go ahead and go down there I think I get this call on a Friday night and I only have enough time to hop in a cab to go. make the drop waiting the for me go? next to the oh. library's book return are three filing boxes stuffed with moldy documents they are in poor shape. I tip the cab driver extra after the bottom of a box disintegrates all over his trunk. Clearly these records were not well taken care of. I wonder if this is more of a decluttering of a long lost basement rather than an illicit sharing of secrets. And yet in the soggy pages I do find proof of Ophelia Turner's position. A series of organization charts of the Wim Research Project spending the first 10 years of R&D. In the earliest version of the chart, she's positioned Stay. at the top level with the title of lab director. The subsequent charts show a rapid expansion of the project with hundreds of names being added as well as I a good deal of shuffling. I need to not have you on because it's wasting power. Dr. Turner's job title changes every two years. Oh, this is a defense. comparison shows that she's quickly and literally being shoved off into her own corner. The years mm -hmm. that this has seen happening correlate mm -hmm. to the downturn in her PR appearances. Another name appears briefly on the organization chart. You guessed it. Alan Turner. A quick search in the county office shows that he's Ophelia's husband. Married at 22, no children on record, died in 1961. The cause of death is unlisted, which means only one thing. The government scrubbed it from the record. Okay, so not only did Ophelia Turner exist, she was one of the highest ranking members on the Lim Research Project. And she was intimately involved with these so-called anomalies. Did she create them? Did she dissect them? Did she unleash them onto her homeland like some sort of mad scientist? Yes, did it was I fantastic. She even had a cackle. After 8 p.m. in my desperate bid to meet my deadlines for this series. Yes. Lots of questions I couldn't possibly know the answers to. But one good lead follows another. And soon, I get another phone call more on the next episode of Frequency File. Okay, moving on to uh, the Deep Zone. This one has an interesting condition. The meteorite medley. Meteorites from an external meteor shower. Or is that eternal? It is eternal. My bad, I'm sorry, reading issues. Uh, mem uh, meteorites from an eternal meteor shower are forever falling in this part of the zone. They're not normal meteorites. Let's have some fun. All right. Cool. Exhausting explosions. Oh no. All right. I didn't see that one. I should have paid more attention. This came from a. Uh, this thing from a payload that peculiar thing it means it's got a, a special quirk to it and that quirk is it's very fast to fuel and uh, refill hopefully it doesn't go and, and break on me or anything like that uh, as I found out the one that came with the car breaks all the time Oh, I should refill this as well. As oh, oh, oh. much as we can.
let's see. Oh, that's a lot of anchors. Okay. We are going to head here, but we're going to collect our anchors as we go. We have just a little bit more of our audio logs, though, don't we? There we go. You did good. We can meet. This is Frequency File, Episode 7. Apparently, I passed some sort of test with my impromptu retrieval of moldy documents. I was rewarded with a connection to Richard Phillips, a man who claimed that the not only had worked in the zone, but stayed there years after its closure. Oh, hello guys. Excuse me. Hi. I am not in the mood for this. What benefits? Oh. So that was always the question, wasn't it? Well, at our own rate, pickpocket. Some of the scientists, in particular, like to claim legitimate reasons for staying behind, but we were, you know, they were all misguided. We all had some we were learning from. Right. How long we're were fine. there? I want these answers, but some zone secrets are best left secret. You no. Know. It wasn't pretty the things we had to do to survive. But it was quiet. Blissfully peacefully quiet. I haven't seen or heard anything like that. It's been weird noises and loud and I'm not sure you were actually here. I, I legitimately don't think he was here. Oh, I missed a tourist. Oh well, I'll run him over next time. You're gonna be right behind me, aren't you? The trick gets old, guys. Thank you, though. Really, thank you. Yes, they move as well. They move as well. That That's just great. They move as well. Ooh, ow. That was my... I, I'm sorry, my friend. I'm sorry. I should fix you up. I should fix you up, but I'm not sure I have the time. We have no time in the zone. This is not a stable zone. And any moment now, we're going to be hearing about that from everyone. Uh... We have one more file to go through right now. Um, yes. I will repair you in a minute. We are going to the next one, which is just to my right. Sure. One of our things is to overcharge the... Uh, hello! Ah, overcharge the uh, limb device here. The, the arc. Is it Arc? Arc Dock, right? Something like that. Anyway, we're going to overcharge, overcharge the device for the mission, so having extra energy is probably going to be uh, beneficial for us. Yeah. There. Uh, right, it's, it's right in front of me. Nope. There it is. I am missing a door. I just noticed I'm missing a door. Where the heck is my door? Are you kidding me? Was it stolen?
terrifying. I can make myself another door. I am rapidly dying, but I can make myself another door. Well, this is great. This is wonderful. I'm going to get out of here, and then I'll make myself another door. We are in a storm! This is terrible! Ow! Okay, I need... I'm not in the storm anymore. I need to go behind me for this. Oh. Okay. This is what happens. This is the meteorite thing. This is... Is that my door? You took my door. I mean, left, right, and everything else here. Okay. Okay, I have had enough. Please. Enough. Please. I need this. You are not allowed to have my things. Okay, we are going away now. Hang on. It's probably plenty of food. Oh. Okay. This, 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 this is, everything's fine. I don't care what you're saying, everything's fine. It's like a pet. You gotta tell him who's boss eventually here. Uh, I need just a breather, a moment. Oh. Oh. Okay. Uh, while we're repairing things, let's do that last frequency file, shall we? Thank you. You know, time's kind of wishy-washy here. Like, like ham radio? Yeah, but world's more sophisticated. Some property of radio waves made it the only consistent method of transmission. So it was a prime method of communication. People started up their own radio stations, made their own programming. Didn't matter who was listening. It was the human need to talk that were fulfilling. Okay, but give me a little hint. You weren't completely deprived of supplies, right? Oh, easy. That's where the breachers came in. What? Frequency file. More about the breachers and what they thought of our topic at hand. Dr. Ophelia Turner. Okay then. That's not repair party, thank the you very much. It was a network of people, including those who claimed to have infiltrated the zone, and the people on the inside that enabled them. Where there's an iron-fisted ruling authority, there's always a resistance. And as wonderfully weird as everything we've heard about the Zone has been so far, these breachers honestly take the cake. There's cake now? This is Frequency File, Might be Episode hungry. 8. Infiltrating the Olympic Exclusion Zone is a whole lot of work. To start, you'd have to get through, past, or over a 300-meter outer wall. There were layers or, you know, layers sucked of through. security checkpoints, and the zone was carved out into sectors, each with very specific clearance requirements. If you were somehow able to make it through all of that, then you'd start dealing with the rampant radiation and a whole host of other dangers. So imagine my surprise to hear that there were people who made a whole career out of wall breaching. Yeah, I lived in the zone for 10 years. My partner works for hard, uh, 
Yep, if you radiation high, your bad. Favorite brand of smokes from the outside, or a souvenir from the inside. Carolyn was your gal. I mean, yeah, by all measures, it was an easy life on the inside. Okay. Part of your care of most everything: groceries to your door, free housing. Salary was good. Ooh. You didn't have much to use it on, but straight ahead. At least right? you know you'd be set with savings and pension when you eventually went back into the real world. Eventually. Is that going to be in our future? I hope so. Oh, I just realized we have no battery power. Oh, that means I have no shield. Oh, okay. Stay right there for a second. And that's that's it. We're all caught up, but I wanted to listen to more. Ow. The car didn't like that idea. No, no, no. Hang on, hang on, man. I'm not ready yet. Thank you. Cool. What was the... Never mind. This is still minor, minor damage from the radiation. Okay. Yes, we just passed into badness. Hush now. Not that we can't listen to the music. It's just... It tends to be a bit distracting when you're being irradiated and your your car your very precious precious car is hurting I wonder if there's any Olympian fragments around no not in this part of the zone it needs to be the red spires and we're not there yet next zone oh oh hey fuel can we yeah why don't we hi Uh, just a second. Cool, cool. Ah, I miss this. You know, just refueling. Refueling, refueling. Yeah, same thing. Uh, the battery was awesome. You know, you could at least hold this for me, but whatever. Uh, the battery is awesome. I, I do appreciate what it could do, but yeah. Oh, we're right close to our destination. There, there it is. Yeah, they they sometimes just kind of explode themselves. The tourists are just just an annoyance, really. And they they also like to throw things at you. Mind you, I still have had things rain from the sky. Don't know what to say on that. I've had a, ooh, look at all the goodies. Ooh, look at all the goodies. Okay. And a side fuel tank. Oh, we're definitely getting that. We'll see how good or bad this is when we're not, you know, running out of time and all the rest of that fun, fun stuff. That is why they throw things. And now we're badly damaged again. That just sucks. Uh, we need to go this way. So we have 14.5 Kalim. Right, I forgot you were a thing. So we got 14.5. We're, we're way good on energy. So we're just going to go for the exit. And we're going to continue on with the mission. Excuse me. I know, I'm sorry. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, there's another one! Ah, uh, I hate it. Alright, that's fine. Straight ahead. Don't need those, thank you. Not straight ahead, not straight ahead. Not straight ahead, that's a bomb. Dude, this is like the worst. Thank you. J just inch along until we can get somewhere stable, please. How do we get up there? How do we get through here? That way and then around? Sure. Oh, here's a fuel truck too. This one doesn't have any tourists around it. Should've came here. Oh, you're fine. Stop whining. I mean, you, you are basically falling apart, but you're fine. 
Uh, where is the road? There we go. Long button. You know, when you want to go faster, you instantly uh, press the run button, <laughs> even when you're driving. <laughs> no one else, just me? Okay. I should get the nitros. I, I have a one. I got one from a uh, payload. It was very cool find. Ooh, hey, should we get some of this? Why not? We're already here. It's not like the zone's collapsing or anything. <laughs> oh, that's it? Just more shakes? It's not very fun. Yeah, yeah, the meteors are, are great. Uh, the road is just up here, isn't it? It's not that I'm unaffected by it. It's not that I uh, am not, you know, panicked or worried. It's just, um, I got a lot of other things worrying about right now, so, you know, being crushed by a meteorite is going to be the least of, least of my problems. Ooh, investigator. Because you're in the, deep, in the deep zone right now, check out the investigators when you can, because they sometimes have Olympian fragments uh, in this menagerie, in this cordiacopia of uh, parts, goodies, and otherwise detritus. Words are fun. I don't know what I'm saying most of the time, but words are fun. You are hurting! <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey! it's At least it's morning time. That means we'll have some solar power soon. Wonderful. On to the mission proper. Perpetual stability. We are good. So I'm going to repair the car now. This is kind of why we have so many cuts. Oh. Sure, this too. The electrical grid is your department. You know the plan as well as I do. So you'd rather trust me than have to speak up for yourself? Guess you're on your own, driver. Good luck. Okay, fine. The regular anchors aren't enough to overcharge the ARC device to the level we need. What? But there's an old anomaly barricade we can piggyback onto. It's archaic technology, an early attempt to stop anomalies from drifting out into the wider Olympic Peninsula. It worked for some time. Until it didn't. But long enough to get the old wall built. The barricade's in bad shape, but what's a little rampant voltage leakage? Not like the ghosts and goblins of the deep zone will mind. And if they do, all the better for Francis. Huh? Appreciate the olive branch, Oppie, but boy, do you have a lot to learn about the paranormal. I'd be happy to give you a primer after all this is over. Ugh, hard pass. I'm far too old for that. The car will induce a current along the barricade, in the same way you did it crossing the old wall. Every connection point needs to be induced within a limited time. Electrify the entire barricade, and we'll have all the power we need. Okay. You heard him. Floor it, driver. Gladly. That was fun. I'm glad they're reusing the mechanics instead of, uh, at this point in the game, introducing new ones. Uh, it is... This is, like, the second to last mission. There's one more after this. That's why I put so much time into it. I, I like this game so much that I, I wanted to see and be able to experience the entirety of it. And uh, I've done that as the best of my ability. And that way I could show off certain things. Like the Olympium Torch! It's, it's just like a regular blowtorch, but so much better. And I will show you an Olympian Vein and a bunch of other stuff. There, there's a lot of the same. I've shown off most of it, and that's that's kind of the issue. But it, it's the same way of a Sonotica, wherein there's a lot of the same. It's a lot of the same fishies and, and things in that game. It doesn't mean it's not good. It doesn't mean that you don't just love it and keep coming back. And yes, uh, most of the time I cut out the transit between here and there because there is much of the same. And this time we had stuff to listen to, so we listened to it. And uh, yeah, that, that's that's why there's usually so many cuts. Still get a little surprised at the noise. Everything's fine. Ah. 
anyway um so yeah it's gonna be a longer episode because i'm not cutting out all the information that we got from those wonderful frequency files i thought i had them all i thought we were right to the edge but i guess there's one or two more this is going to be oh i see i see these okay we have a long racetrack i love it and then a massive gate at the center Okay. Okay then. Since it is perpetual stability, we'll see how far we can get. But I also want to make sure that I can show off a, an Olympium uh, vein. I want to refill while we're here. For one, this keeps taking battery power, but it keeps refilling. So long as it's full, it doesn't take battery power. So it only fills to a point. Coupled with a solar panel or, you know, for the rain, the other thing, the hydro panel or hydro generator, something like that. It offsets the, the battery costs a great deal. Mind you, sit there like I was in the last zone with the lights on doing nothing. That drains the ba battery a lot faster than anything else. We good? We good. Except for that. There we go. And... Right resource radar nothing usually when you first enter always remember the shield usually when you first enter uh, you don't get to see any of the resources until you you go a little bit into the zone it is proximity based in fact I can show that before I show the resources abductors I have basically come to, to the consensus that they are at best mis mischievous but otherwise most of the time fairly helpful I have been taken out of anomalies and out of uh, problems by the abductors they've been removing uh, bunnies from me and they're generally one of the better ones anyway uh, this is what I'm going to show you that is the radius of the resource radar and then what happens is they show up on your HUD for a while we don't need fuel cans at the moment. There we go. There's an Olympium one right there. Is that another one? Yeah, great. We, we'll collect some of this stuff real quick. Um, then I will. I'll make. I'll make a cut right back to our mission. I just want to show this wonderful stuff. Yes, they are so easy to miss. Do not miss them. Your resource radar is one of the most important things for uh, going through the zone if you're after Olympian Fragments. If you're not, then... Oh, it's a blacksmith. Uh, if you're not, then it's not important. The regular hammer does nothing. Make sure it's a magnetic hammer. Always have a spare in your car. Because you can't build them on the way. They're tier 3. Yeah, that, that blacksmith's reaching for us. We're going to start the mission. I showed off the Olympian vein and that was all I really wanted to do. Because I had no idea what they looked like and took me forever to find one. Uh, the resource radar is... It is one of the most important things if you want to continue with your upgrades. Otherwise, it doesn't matter. And just have fun with it. It's one of the best things about this game. Hey, you're near the Barricade's operating station. Can you get in there and look around? We need something that will give us the lay of the land. Sure. Wish you had a little recharge station or something here, but yeah, okay, great. You know what? I'm going in here. Oh, no chemicals. I have used a lot more repair putty on this mission than I have in any other mission in the last 20 hours. That's okay. Uh, can you guys see? Yeah, you can. Link all barricade gates. Optional, scan the barricade tower map. I'm gonna scan it anyway, because it's fun. Besides, he seems down in the dumps. Oh, you're already on? Aww. I like flipping switches. 
Okay, I'm not seeing anything here. Wait, is this... It is. There. Perfect. I'm uploading the barricade map to your art device. By my calculations, if you electrify all eight posts, you'll have all the power you need. Cool. Obvious, For what? Right? Does it seem right to you? I, I, I think so. Yeah, I, I ran the numbers a few times and I... Then get to it, driver. Teacher with the student. I appreciate it. She's not jumping in because she's ran the numbers herself and she knows it's right, but she's letting him have the confidence in his thing. I mean, it doesn't matter the age, it's, it's still a teacher and a student. I love that. Okay. Uh, do I need to repair anything before we go off? I mean, the headlights possibly, but that shouldn't be an issue. And we're off. Wonderful. Have a little snack. I mean, I wish we had more of a faster power regen, but that's fine. Oh, this is what we're doing. Cool, we got our route. Awesome. Well, let's go. We'll floor it. Really. Trying to maintain that speed is going to be an issue, though. Whoa. Yeah, every time you little twist and turn, our speed slows down a little. Oh, a Numa too. Oh well. Hey, at least we get to do this one during the day. I think every other one we've done is like nighttime. Cool. Oh, that's a... Okay, we're good. I'm sure going a little faster. It'd be a lot more fun if it was faster. How fast are we going? We're only going 60? Come on. No, I will say, I, I have played this game so much that I get out of the, the vehicle to like go in the store or something. I. I Emerg uh, I think immediately about putting on the emergency brake now, <laughs> since I took it out the auto parker. Looking good, driver. Oops. I've also noticed uh, a lot more cars with uh, equipment racks on their tops. <laughs> and exploding bunnies. Well, alright, they fell off the bridge. Keep it up. Sure, this is fun. <laughs> I think I was saying that before uh, before they cut me off. I, I If I didn't enjoy the game so much, I wouldn't have put so much time in it. And yes, it was all off, ca off camera. Not much happened. But I... Uh, no, I, I really, I recorded a few... Thank you, a few more to go. I recorded a few episodes and it was just like, you know, there's nothing happening. I can't make anything out of this. So we just jumped right into the mission. It was exploration and a lot of the same. I mean, I, I probably panicked like crazy the first time I got stuck in a meteor storm, but that's beside the point. Hey, I missed one. Olympian Vein, remember that's there. Where are we? Okay. Oh no. <laughs> I had to look. We're, we're near the bottom. We're near the south. I, I'm glad that they're forgiving on this. If I... You know, that's why you should keep your, your hands on uh, the wheel and your eyes ahead. Because otherwise you get distracted and you end up crashing into a telephone pole. Especially going at, what, 60 miles an hour? Is that it still? No, we're almost up to 80. Faster car. Faster. I, 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 you're not the car, but all right, yes.
Okay. I, I know he said that, but I... Yeah. Course corrections. Not fun. Oh. Little help here. Thank you. Or, well, thank you for trying, anyway. Yeah, the limb shield is so wonderful. Always remember to turn it on when you uh, after you zone, because... Yeah, for some reason it goes off. Yeah, because of you, I saw that. Oh, and I can't get that last Olympium because you opened up the gate. Great. Thank you. <laughs> yes, I just sit there now. It's fine, it's fine. I mean, that's not fine, and the red barrier's coming in, too. Eat us alive. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize what you were. I was already looking ahead. Mostly because I thought I saw an Olympian vein I missed as well. I hate that. Knowing that there's some over there that I can't get. I mean, I could book it, but we're already here. It's fine. Back to the shop. I got an achievement? What? I heard it. I heard the, the steam thing pop up. Didn't show up though on my screen. My side. Oh well, cool. That means we just have one mission left. Oh no. I want more of this game. Where's the DLC? Come on. <laughs> an expansion. Maybe a, a different... It doesn't have to be the Pacific Northwest. It could be somewhere else. Uh, a different sort of... Uh, another zone somewhere. Uh, maybe what's going on in space. Because we're getting all kinds of things. That eternal meteor shower. There's things going on in space now. Something to do with that the, uh, the moon landing and stuff. Oh, the moon. Why not? Survival on the moon? Cool. We're back. Nice work out there. Thank you. The whale could be a lot. Take your time, gear up. No telling what that remnant's going to unleash. That's a good point. The end of the road. Yes. Yes, it is. I left the car running. There. Well, standard repairs. Hey, driver, I sent you something. If you don't mind taking a look. Sure. In memorandum, what? Never forget, ride together. Tobias's favorite cryptid of them all. If it's not too much to ask, uh, if you could put it on your dashboard, so Tobias can come along for the ride, for wherever you're going. Uh, but sure. don't feel obligated by any means. Why not? There. Dashboard, huh? So it would be one of these guys? Oh, that is terrifying. Sure. Maybe I'll have less drinking and driving there. Oh, cool! A memoriam. Awesome. Well, is that it? You guys are done? Cool. I am going to leave the episode right there. I've got things to repair and a let me silence the beeping. Let me silence the beeping. I've listened to that for hours. 
Lots of news flash. Elma, August 4th, 1969. Strange new footage has emerged that shows the legendary Bigfoot strolling through the state park near Elma on the Olympic Peninsula. Captured by a hiker who wishes to remain anonymous, the 8mm film is remarkably clear and arguably depicts a humanoid figure of some size moving just within the tree line. Later, we'll be speaking to local Bigfoot ex- expert Beth Rosen. You like, uh, you like the movie something, something, something. Yeah, little news flash there. Yes, we we we've seen Bigfoot. Thank you, thank you. That was that was cool. And it's silent. Thank you, really. Thank you for that. <laughs> All right, I'm leaving the episode right there. And next time we are going to do the last episode, or oh, the last mission. Oh. All right. Until then, thank you all for joining me, and have fun, everyone.